Hello everyone, Pally Tough here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we have landed upon Kael Thas, a notorious character for me because when he first came out, I was so bad at him. And he was absolutely ridiculous when he first released. Living Bomb back in the day, dude, you could put Living Bomb inside of a minion wave and it would do damn, it would spread to every minion in the wave. You could literally one shot heroes. I remember clear as day a video of a Kael'thas sitting in a bush waiting for a Lili to walk up to the minion wave and then immediately blowing it up like it never even existed. And she was full health at everything. He was absolutely disgusting when he first released, but that didn't matter because I could not play him. I had an abysmal, I think it was just barely double digit win rate on Kel'Thas. It was really, really bad. And it wasn't through a lack of trying. I put in time and effort and for some reason just could not wrap my head around how to play this character. I simply played too aggressively. I played him like an auto attacker when clearly he is very much a mage. I know that now, but hindsight is 2020. Well, eventually we went through years of training, years of training, and I somehow finally figured out this character. As of right now, he has a 48.21% win rate, a 34% popularity with a whopping 18.3% of that popularity just being people banning him. Now, my impression of Kael'thas has always been that in the lower leagues of ranked play, he's an absolute monster to deal with. But once you start getting up into the higher ranks, people fear him a lot less. So I mean, I am actually kind of interested to see. I'm going to check. In Bronze League, he is banned. <laughs> In Bronze League, he has a popularity of 55% and a ban rate of 38%. In Silver League, a popularity of 50%, a ban rate of 30%. At Gold League, he's still in the top five players banned with a 24% ban rate. He falls off when you get to Platinum. He's in the top 10, but he's the 10th slot with a 17% ban rate. Is this interesting? I find this super fascinating. You get to Diamond League and all of a sudden there's no sign of Kael'thas at all. In Diamond League, he has a 7% ban rate. He's not even in the top 20 for Diamond. For Master League, he has a 2% ban rate. <laughs> Wow, he's banned slightly more than Chen. Man, that was actually kind of interesting. I was actually going to make a video about this at one point that Kale Thus was the most perfect character. I actually missed my window on it, but I had several years to do it. And what I mean by this is there was a three year time period where Kael Thost received no patches. And I'm exaggerating a little bit with three years, but from November 13th, 2018, there was a drought where he wasn't changed at all, not even bug fixes until January 19th, 2021. January of this year, he received some very minor tweaks. So I was going to make a joking video that he's clearly the perfect character. There's no reason to change him. He's all success is perfection has already been found. But yeah, I guess I waited a little bit too long. Y'all thoughts is super duper fun. Unfortunately, matchmaking wasn't fun this weekend. It was Thanksgiving weekend. And in my experience, the most toxic behavior always comes out on holiday weekends. I think it's because people finally have time off from their job and they want to enjoy a video game. And if anything goes wrong in that video game, it just sparks start flying. Luckily, today's game wasn't very toxic, but I had to trudge through some muck to get to today's game. Hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Appreciate you being here. We'll be back again Wednesday with Kel'Thuzad. It's already recorded, baby girl. We are ready to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the battlefield of eternity today. Friendly team, Salami, Ashalinore, Hooked on Phonics, Arthas, Kira, and Rhaegar. The enemy team, Malfurion, Cho, Gaul, Murky, and Aziva. I think for our friendly team, I could take the top lane. That'd be totally fine. Phoenix, totally able to. Really, we have a lot of people that can go to the solo lane. 
and be okay. But we have phenomenal lane clear from the gate, and I want to show it off. If you've never seen Kael'thas before, his Q ability is the Flame Strike. It is a circular skill shot. Throw it out on the ground, and a few moments later, it explodes, dealing damage. Your W ability is Living Bomb. This is basically a damage over time spell or a spell with a set duration that then explodes to deal damage. If two heroes are close to each other when this goes off, they will share the damage and spread the bomb between each other. Gravity Lapse is our control spell. We shoot a tornado towards our adversaries. If that tornado lands, it will then pick our adversary up into the air. There, I think I'm immune to damage while they're up there, but it allows us... No, I don't think that's true, actually. It's just a stun, right? Yeah, it's just a stun. Usually, that's what we use to set up for our combo, which is an E into a Q. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Let me out! Let me out! Phoenix has left the game. I'm sure he'll be back, though. Let's play a little more cautiously than that and not take any more damage. Everything I just mentioned can be augmented by our trait. If we use our trait and then cast our W, you can see that it does not incur a cost. Hold on. Walking away. Why am I so slowed? Must have been some slime shit. He's coming in with the wall. Will the wall work? Of course not, but the corpse spiders will. Really important for me that I focus on getting globes in the early game just to make my late game a little bit easier. Phoenix is rejoining. Feels good, man. Feels good. Not too sure why Murky rotated up unless Nazebo's wanting to go get some camps. And honestly, there's nothing I can do about that. If he wants to go get him, he can. Looks like he actually rotated down to the bottom lane and was met with a really early demise. So everything's fine. We're going to be fine. So, our Verdant's Fierce, if we augment our Q, it makes the area bigger. If we augment our W, we get a free cast that does not consume mana. By the way, Murky can totally remove our Pyroblast. That's, that's fun. But you can't remove this! I can't kill him. <laughs> uh, and our E ability will travel through one additional target before it... Uh, oh! Ah! 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 Holy shit, I'm going back. It'll travel through one additional target uh, before it stops. So you can actually pick up two enemies with this instead of one. Okay, we had a really sketchy early game. I'm just getting into the groove of playing heroes again. It's been a few days. <sighs> Let's collect ourselves. We know our boundaries. We know what we can and cannot do. Now it's just time to execute. I am actually thinking about going Pyroblast in today's game, mainly because uh, Malfurion can't do a damn thing about it. So we could literally just put this spell on Malfurion every single engagement, and it would force him back or force him to use a lot of defensive stuff. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Ice Block anymore, right? If I'm wrong, that's a, that's a really big thing to be wrong about. That's a really big thing. Let's put the Living Bomb on him, force him to use his bubble. See if we can continue to kite Murky around. Our team pretty slow on the rotation to the objective, but they are getting this Mercenary Camp, so I'm pretty happy with that. It does kind of just give me more time to collect Globes in lane as well. If they're not rotating in, I'm not going to rotate in. That would just be silly. I've said this a lot over the years, but I haven't said it recently. Sometimes it's best to do the wrong thing if everyone else on your team is also doing the wrong thing. If I walked in and started damaging this by myself, I would be super duper exposed and likely easily taken down by the enemy team. So let's not do that. I am going to use the Living Bomb on Murky. That is going to make him pop his bubble for defense. The Flame Strike does go down underneath him as well. Phoenix opting to not help in any way as this child of a fucking frog is attacking me. But hey, we brought it together. We brought it together. Our Sippy Cup is up. I'm going to go try to get that as fast as I can. Murky reappearing in the middle lane. Let's make sure he doesn't push this too far into towers as well, actually. I wouldn't hate getting this region globe here. Yeah, we're just going to Living Bomb explode this. Looks like he might be rotating up to get a Mercenary Camp, maybe using his Bribe stacks for that. But my team needs me on offense, so I'm going to be there for them. We're also going to... to how does Burned Flesh work against Cho'Gal? Does Burned Flesh... Does he count as two heroes? This might be kind of fun. Normally, I would go for Sun King's Fury, especially in Quick Match, because no one knows how to deal with Living Bombs at all. Like, even a little bit. No one understands it even a little bit. But burn flesh. 
might be the play. I might also just be totally wrong. That That is also a, a big possibility here. We are going to put the living bomb on the minion wave yet again as Phoenix disconnects one more time. Uh, let's see if I can catch Fury in here. Actually catching Cho'Gall, we hit him with the Q and it looks like he didn't take any bonus damage, but that's okay. We're gonna put our living bomb on this wall, hoping that the enemy team would walk a little too close. They decided not to. Our Q is out again. Although not connecting with anything. Let me move out of these roots, move out of these spiders. Uh, I put Living Bomb on Cho'Gall, comboing Murky as well. Beautifully done. We take him down that time. And uh, not too much actually happened up here in the top lane. Not too much really happened at all. I'm going to rotate down, start to get those region globes down there. Looks like I may have just missed out on them. As Phoenix rejoins the game, I'm recording this video on Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, this is kind of what every game has been like. We have someone who can't stay connected, or everyone is on their most vile behavior possible. Everyone's just being super fucking toxic over everything. I don't know what it is about holiday weekends and MOBAs, but it really brings out all the frustrations in people for some reason. Uh, Kira is taking this camp just beneath us. We want her to do that, so I'm just going to make sure Murky stays at bay, and it looks like that was perfectly fine. The friendly team about to hit level 10. Uh, let's get Living Bomb on the mage, spread that damage around a little bit. This Merc camp can easily take down this building if Murky isn't able to dispatch it. He is going in for the puffer fish. We're going to put our... Living Bomb back on him. Now that he's used his safety bubble, this is going to get rid of the Sippy Cup for the enemy team and also set us up to hopefully be able to take down this building. Uh, we're going to put Living Bomb on it and start to back up, but that bomb might actually... <laughs> oh, that's, that's bad news for you. Oh, that's bad news for me. Oh, that's a full fucking team rotation onto me. All right, we'll just try to deal as much damage as we can, die as fast as we can, and hopefully get back up for the next objective. Kira somehow made it out of there, dude. I was sacrificed to the wolves, and she made it out. We're at 15 regen globes picked up right now, 15 out of 20. Once we complete our quest, we're going to get a really nice activatable shield that is going to shield us based off of our maximum mana. And every time we pick up globes, it's raising our maximum mana. My very best game... I was looking at like 80 something stacks. That was my record. It felt really good as well. Kira on the right target. That Malfurion can't do much of anything. This enemy team being forced out of here. I'm not even gonna bother using my ultimate ability on that Nazebo. He was already dead. I'm just gonna move up and start to deal some damage to the objective now. Our team did a phenomenal job of clearing them out. Now let's make sure that we actually get damage in here when we can. It took me a really long time to learn how to play mages and heroes. I was always really good at auto attackers. I played, you know, ADC. I played marksman in League of Legends for many, many years. And I, I'm pretty good at my movement in, in between auto attacking. But positioning for ultimate safety all the time is something that took me a really long time to learn. He says he get pulls in from his position of ultimate safety. Let's just go ahead and cast the Pyroblast on his Abba here, interrupt his ultimate with the gravity lapse and send him to an early grave. Before I go back for my sippy cup, I'm just going to clear this lane with Kira, grab that region globe, bringing us up to 17, then cycle over here for my sippy cup. Although, with how this is looking right now, the friendly team really shouldn't need me for the objective. So what I'm going to do is actually show you the camp taking potential of Kael'thas. Now, that's just Living Bomb and Flame Strike. You want to augment your Flame Strike so you can cast it more often and then look at the spread of that damage. Look how fast I could tape camps. I think that is so crazy satisfying. Now this enemy team has to make a choice. Are they going to defend the top lane and stop the mercenary camp or are they going to defend the bottom lane and try to stop the objective? Looks like Nazebo has made his choice. 45 seconds left on our Pyroblast cooldown, so we're likely not going to be able to use it in this fight, but we are going to pick up Pyromaniac at level 
level 13. Now that same strategy we just did going against that mercenary camp is gonna be even easier because every tick of damage over time from our pyroblast is going to be lowering all of our basic ability cooldowns. As Cho'Gal gets dragged into the fight, we're going to gravity lapse him, picking him up so he's not able to retreat at all. Now that the enemy team is walking up to defend the wall, we're gonna lay our living bomb on that wall and hopefully have it spread out against them. Notice as I'm laying my living bomb down, the only time I'm using it is when I have the free one from Verdant Spheres. That's not costing us any mana. That's allowing us to keep our living bomb cooldown. If an enemy actually walks up, we want to be able to use it. Uh, gravity laps on to Chogal does miss. Nazebo sitting still for a long time. I'm rooted, but the ancestral heal was successful in keeping me alive. We're not going to be pulled back in by Chogal. Living Bomb is on Murky. He dies, spreading it to Chogal. And now we are looking at a core ready to potentially take it down. I'm hitting it with as much damage as I can. We see Murky coming back. I'm just going to send a pirate blast after him just for the lulls i know he could totally immune it but i wanted to cast it at least one more time well uh i've played five fucking games leading up to this one and unfortunately i didn't get to show you guys much of the late game uh but this was by far the best match that i was able to get into today MVP going to Arthas, who managed to get zero deaths in this game. 44% damage to Immortals from Arphonix. Hey, and I did 38% of our team's structure damage. Look at me. Here are the stats for the game. My hero damage, and being in the solo lane, you expect it to be a little bit lower, but hey, we did totally fine coming together in those team fights at the end. We soaked the most XP in the match. We also cleared the, we did the most siege damage in the match. Talents we went for today were Mana Addict into Netherwind, Burned Flesh, Pyroblast, and then Pyromaniac at level 13. At 16, we would have gone for Ignite, probably, or Fury of the Sunwell, whichever we're feeling. Fury of the Sunwell does combo really, really well with Burned Flesh, but if Flame Strike applies Living Bomb, all we have to do is start augmenting our Q ability with our trait to make that radius bigger, and all of a sudden, we're getting the benefit of our W ability. We're potentially getting some extra damage from Burned Flesh as well. Super duper good talent to throw into that, especially in Quick Match, where uh, people spread the bomb quite a lot. At level 20, I likely would have gone for flamethrower just to increase the range of that ability a little bit make it easier to poke enemies down but we never got there thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed next up we're gonna have kelthu motherfucking zod